uh, well, I think the first one was education and training. Yeah. And that came about because of the training group. The Solution Focus Brief Therapy Association started with people who wanted to talk with each other about training. Yeah. And so we had all of our conversations were about training, not about doing therapy, but but training. And that's what Steve wanted. Mm-hmm. He wanted to have conversations with people about training. Um, so I asked all of those people. Uh, well, actually, it was probably Terry Trepper who said, we need a book. Mm. And then he and then he looked at me because I had already edited several books of that sort uh. and said, sure, why not? So education and training. I did one with Joel Simon on um, working with people who are who have been long-term users of the mental health system people who are often diagnosed with a severe or chronic mental illness schizophrenia bipolar disorder um, I don't remember all the different ones Joel had worked with people um, in the mental health system and um, I had a little bit, but not as much as he had, and he wanted to write a book, but he needed a co-author. So I helped him write that book. Um, There's one called Doing Something Different, and that's one that therapists have, um, and trainers, have written small pieces about, and I I put those in. Uh, Are there others on Solution Focus? Uh, handbook of solution focus brief therapy. Oh yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Frank Thomas and I were not happy with the handbooks that we had read so far because they weren't as systemic as uh-huh. we thought they could be, and so we edited a book called uh, Handbook of Solution Focus Brief Therapy, um, clinical practices or something like that. Uh-huh. And uh, a lot of people who are well known in the field contributed chapters on the specific work that they like to do. So I, I think one of the reasons that I did that is that I really like helping other people get their voices, their ideas written and published, but they're not always good writers mm-hmm. or good editors, and I can do those things. I can help them. So uh, I enjoy that. I also think that editing is easier than mm-hmm. writing. <laughs> <laughs> so I do that, but... Um, I have, a, I have a new, I have I, a new idea, and I'm going to tell you. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but I'm thinking that it would be good to have a book on solution-focused family therapy hmm. because so much of solution-focused therapy is done with individuals. Yeah. And people say, well, how do you do this with couples? How do you do this with families? Oh, that's a paradox and, because it was a family therapy. I know. Yeah. I know. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think that um, Insu particularly intended for this to become such an individual. Mm-hmm. And um, oh, this does it work with depression? Does it work with anxiety? Does it work with psychosis? I don't think that's that's what they were thinking at all. And I don't. Um, we just have so many books like that. Mm-hmm. And I think it encourages people to ask themselves, well, um, does it work with bullying? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yes, it does, and as a matter of fact, there's a book on that. <laughs> um, but I'll get questions. I'm sure you do too. What do you do about? How do you use solution focused with this problem or that mm-hmm. problem? And that was a question that Steve and Insu just disliked hearing. Yeah, they really didn't like that. So that's kind of the story of my editing and saying it was beautiful. Or I really like to do this in therapy. And well, how do you do that in therapy? And he said, we really need to have a book. Mm. And I said, well, that's a great idea, Terry. He was already editor of a journal. And I said, I think you could edit a book like that. And he said, no, you're going to edit the book. Ah. And I had had another friend also. um, He and I decided that we needed to have a book of basic skills. Mm. And before we could do that book, we had to find out what the basic skills were. So we did a research project, and then uh, we were going to write a book, but he moved away, and we never did it. And again, I was talking to him at a conference, and he said, well, you need to do that book. I never have. I've never done that book. Somebody else did it first, which is good. But when Terry said, you're going to do this, I said, Terry, I don't know how to go about that. So he and I mapped it out together, and I found that I liked 
meeting people mm-hmm. through this kind of project. I liked, um, we have the internet, so I could do it all in the internet. Um, although I got a lot of paper back then, this was the mid 80s. Uh, I, I enjoyed reading their ideas and then I could use their ideas. Um, and I found that I do a, a good job editing. As a professor, I had to edit a lot of papers. Mm-hmm. Um, theses and dissertations and when students wanted to publish their work I became the editor and my mother was an editor she was a writer and an editor not formally she never published but I learned how to write and I learned um, good English and I studied APA for these other purposes and just found that I have a so almost an obsessive um, talent for commas and semicolons, <laughs> as you well know. <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's and a sentence structure. Asset. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a, I have good diction, and so I know uh, good vocabulary. So I, I know when a sentence doesn't make sense and when it needs to be written so that it makes more sense. Yeah. So I think it was because I enjoy good writing. Mm-hmm.